We all have witnessed the unfortunate consequences of conflicts between the interests of man and those of nature. We have so much to learn from our past, and yet we keep ignoring and repeating the same mistakes. We continue to clear out the forests to create more space for ourselves without giving a second thought to the fact that we are destroying homes of other species to the point of their extinction. Is our development and entertainment worth the extermination of species? Let's begin with the sea mink. Sea minks have recently become extinct. Close relatives to American minks, sea minks lived on the coast of the Atlantic. In 1880, the last year of its existence, the sea mink was taken from an island in the Gulf of Maine. This species was exterminated before any scientists could analyze it. Almost 50% bigger and a flatter body than the American mink, the sea minks had long bushy tail and a coarser reddish-brown coat. The females were shorter than the males. The sea mink was hunted until it became extinct due to unregulated removal and killing for an expanding European fur trade. They were hunted too, but the level of intensity of their hunting being low would not have depleted the numbers to an unsustainable level. But the pressure from the fur trade contributed heavily to the sea mink's inability to survive. Much could be learned from this species' extinction. Quagga An extinct subspecies of plains zebra formerly were found in vast herds on the Great Plains of South Africa. They had a reddish-brown head, neck and upper parts of the body, irregularly banded and marked with brown stripes bolder on the head and neck and gradually becoming fainter until lost behind the shoulder. There was a broad, dark median dorsal stripe. The undersurface of the body, the legs and the tail were nearly white. The crest was high, surmounted by a standing mane, banded brown and white. The last known surviving quagga died in the London Zoo in 1872. Planned extermination by the colonists and the ruthless hunting are the major reasons for its extinction. Huia. The huia is an extinct species of New Zealand wattle bird endemic to the North Island of New Zealand. The last confirmed sighting of a huia was in 1907, although there were credible sightings in the early 1960s. The main causes for its annihilation were the rampant overhunting for its skin and tail feathers, just for mounted specimens and hat decorations and the widespread deforestation of the lowlands of the North Island by European settlers to create pasture for agriculture. The forests were ancient and ecologically sustainable, primary forests, and therefore Huya were unable to survive in regenerating secondary forests. Passenger Pigeon The extinction of the passenger pigeon is a poignant example of what happens when the interests of man clash with the interests of nature. It is believed that this species once constituted 25 to 40 percent of the total bird population of the United States. It is estimated that there were 3 billion to 5 billion passenger pigeons at the time Europeans discovered America. Unfortunately, the forest clearing and farming, the interests of civilization clashed with the interest of survival of the birds which needed the huge forests. Unable to familiarize themselves to existing in small flocks, the passenger pigeons could not adapt and the civilization prevailed. The wanton slaughter of the birds only raised up the process of their extinction. The converting of forests to farmland eventually wiped off the passenger pigeon. Laughing Owl The laughing owl were exterminated in the early 20th century. The last known bird was found dead on a road at Blue Cliff Station near Timaru in 1914. The laughing owl was called so because of its shrieks that had the quality of a crazed laugh. They made effective hunters of beetles, birds and lizards. This species had yielded to the clearance of its habitat to create farms and to nearly introduce predators. They had no defense against deadly mammalian predators. Stoats, ferrets and cats proved especially fatal for the birds. Not only were they the prey of wild mammals, but humans hunted them too for museum specimens, for curio collections, and for zoos. Bubul, hard bee yeast common throughout Northern Africa and the Middle East, was once used for sacrificial purposes by the ancient Egyptians. 
a uniformly sand-colored beast except for an ill-defined patch of grayish on each side of the muzzle above the nostrils had a terminal tuft of black tail. But this magnificent beast was no match for European hunters who systematically wiped the species out for meat and sport. This picture depicts the last known bubble heart beast, a female, which died in the Paris Zoo in 1923. Very, very recent. The Caucasian bison, a subspecies of European bison, lived in the Caucasus Mountains of Eastern Europe. Used to be hunted by the Caspian tiger and the Asiatic lion in the Caucasus in 10th century, the 17th century saw a large population of the Caucasian bison in an area of the Western Caucasus. Post that, human settlement in the mountains intensified and the range of Caucasian bison became reduced to about one-tenth of its original range at the end of the 19th century. In the 1860s, the population numbered still about 2,000, but was reduced to only 500 to 600 in 1970 and only 50 in 1921. Local poaching didn't stop and the last three Caucasian bison were killed in 1927. The Syrian wild ass, an extinct subspecies of onager native to the Arabian Peninsula. It ranged across present-day Iraq, Palestine, Israel, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Syria, and Turkey. The Syrian wild ass, the smallest form of equidae, only one meter high at its shoulder, could not be domesticated. Its coloring changed with the seasons, a tawny olive coat for the summer and pale sandy yellow for the winter. It was known like other onagers to be untamable and was known for its beauty and strength. They were spotted in large herds in the 15th and 16th centuries by the European travels in the Middle East. However, due to overhunting, the numbers began to drop drastically in the 18th and 19th centuries. Sadly, the last known wild specimen was fatally shot in 1927 at Al-Gahams near the Azraq Oasis in Jordan. And as luck would have it, the same year the last captive specimen died in Vienna. The Thylacine the thylacine is a large carnivorous marsupial now believed to be extinct. Also known as the Thasmanian tiger or Thasmanian wolf, the thylacine was mainly nocturnal or semi-nocturnal but was also out during the day. The animal moved at a slow pace, generally stiff in its movements and hunted singly or in pairs and mainly at night. Although the exact reasons for extinction of the thylacine from mainland Australia are unknown, it appears to have declined as a result of competition with the dingo and possibly hunting pressure from humans. Schomburg's deer. The Schomburg's deer were very graceful. They had a dark brown pelt, lighter underpants and a tail typically white on the underside. The male's antlers were basket-like and all the main tines branched off. The male Schomburg's deer usually had up to 33 points on their antlers with the rack being up to 35 inches long. The female Schomburg's deer had no antlers whatsoever. The Schomburg's deers mainly inhabited the swampy plains with long grass, cane and shrubs, typically in central Thailand in the Chao Phraya River Valley near Bangkok. The deer usually avoided dense vegetation and always travelled in herds that consisted of one adult male, a few females and all their young. With the commercial production of rice for export, Nearly all the grassland and swamps in Thailand were destroyed in the late 19th century. The Schomburg's deer depended heavily on these areas for their habitats or else they would die. Further, their death was expedited due to rampant hunting. The last captive Schomburg's deer was killed in 1938. The Caribbean monk seal or West Indian seal was a species of seal native to the Caribbean and now extinct. Sharks and humans were the primary predators of the Caribbean monk seals. Overhunting of the seals for oil and overfishing of their food sources are the established reasons for the seals' extinction. According to the biologists, overhunting of these seals by humans led to their extinction as they were easy targets for hunters while resting, birthing or nursing their pups on the beach. The last confirmed sighting of the seal was in 1952 in the Caribbean Sea at Serenilia Bank between Jamaica and the Yucatan Peninsula. This was the only subtropical seal native to the Caribbean Sea and Gulf of Mexico.